Starting with some quick tricks and moving up to more advanced ones, here are a bunch of Discord tricks that you should know about. And we're going to start off with the Remix feature that just came out. And unfortunately, this is for Nitro users only. But if you go on your mobile phone right now and you try to send a photo, for example, I have some e-girl contacting me. She wants me to send a photo of my hand so that she can hold it. I don't know how that works, but I'm going to select a photo of my hand. Ignore the rest of my photo gallery. I just forgot to clear it last night. And when you press on a photo at the bottom right, there will be a Remix button. And when you press on this button, it allows you to edit your image. So let's say you're maybe a little bit heavy built like myself. You can uh, use this to crop out your body. Then what you can do is you can add in stickers and stuff. So you could say, oh my gosh, your heart's in my hand. You can add some flavor text and change the color. You know, nothing too crazy. And finally, if the e-girl you're talking to is insane, you can use the pen feature to uh, censor out your fingerprints so she doesn't frame you as a murderer by copying your fingerprints and using some sort of crazy technology with 3D printers. Anyways, once you send this photo and click on done, you can click on send. And when you send it, you will see a little remix button. If you press on it, it, Discord will tell you what it is. Now, next up are timestamps. You can see my message here. It says, I'm going to reveal my feet in an hour. Oh, baby. But this is a timestamp that shows a specific time, and you can do this really easily. There will be a link in the description. It is sesh.fyi slash timestamp, and you can make your own little timestamp. So let's say you want to, uh, maybe you're coming out of the closet and you want to make it a big event for your friends. You just want to pick on the date that it's happening. Can't go back in time, so fortunately I can't set up that celebration for myself. But you can pick a date, then you just need to click on the time, click on confirm, and once you do that, you should see all these little options here. So I'm going to pick this one here. I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to just say, big event, please come. And then I'm going to paste in the little timestamp, press enter, and kaboom. Now this next trick is super duper helpful. Imagine you're talking to your friends that don't exist. And after you type, you see this thing. What? What the? And you get so confused that you decide to post on r slash discord app because you have no idea what's going on. Well, you can actually turn this off because this is suggesting stickers. Go to your settings, scroll down, go to text and images, then you want to scroll down, and when it says sticker suggestions, turn that off. When it says stickers and autocomplete, turn that off. And now, when you type in hello, and you wait for a second because you're trying to figure out how to continue the conversation without sounding awkward because you're socially inept like myself, then you won't have those sticker pop-ups anymore. Now this next tip is for the people that never go outside, because if you own a Discord server or you moderate a Discord server, you might have noticed this verify member button. So the way that this verify member button works is that when someone joins a Discord server and they have this, you must wait for at least 10 minutes to send messages in the server. Well, you can right click on them and click verify member and they will automatically bypass that restriction. And if your server verification level requires people to have a verified phone number, then uh, they won't be able to chat. But guess what you can do? You can right click on them, verify member, and now they don't need a phone number to be in your Discord server. Now I should probably turn this back before I get yelled at again. Now next up, I'm going to show you how to send a message to someone without them getting that awful ping noise. For example, well, what you can do is you can do at silent space, then you can send your message. So hello. And when I press enter, have your ears open for a second. No notification sound because this is a at silent message. And also if your friends won't use that at silent ping and you hate getting the notification sound, just go to your notifications in your settings, scroll down and disable all notification sounds. This thing's a goddamn miracle, by the way. Now, next up, this one's a little bit of a cheeky one, but it's talking about Discord's new markdown. If you enter in six numbers, so just random put in six numbers, then put a period, then put a space. You do that four times and you press enter, uh, things go a little weird. And in fact, before all of this, if you put a hashtag and then a space, it will make it even bigger. And this is because we're using Discord's markdown. And I'll have this linked in the description, but it is a nice article by Discord that talks about how you can format text to make it look prettier. You can do italics, bold, bold italics, underline, then there's headers to make big text like we did before. There's masked links. You can make lists. Basically, markdown is is super handy for organizing things, but it's also super handy for one more thing. Using Markdown, you can add more space to your bio. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. As you can see, once we get past six lines, then Discord will cut it off with these three dots. Well, uh, infinite money bypass spoiler glitch, just use one of these angled brackets and press space. Oh, we just got even more space. Oh, wow, how so convenient. In fact, we can do this for eight, nine, ten. The list goes on. And I just kept doing this. And now if you click on my profile. You have to do a lot of scrolling. Oh, I messed up there. Now this next trick will really change your world. If you want to DM Discord stupid chatbot, Clyde, what you want to do is you want to go in the description and you will see this number here, 108100. You just want to copy this bad boy. Then we need to type in any channel, doesn't matter. Just do slash MSG and not for monosodium glutamate. You actually want to run
run the slash message command. You click on it. For the user, you want to paste in that number and for the message, put a nice little greeting. And when you press the enter key, you will now DM Clyde and you will have access to Clyde. And when you get bored of talking to Clyde by yourself, well, you can just bring it into a DM of a friend. And this, this is how you spam a friend and make them actually hate you because I've been spammed so many times by this thing that I actually have gone crazy. I am losing my sanity because people keep talking to Clyde in my DMs. I'm not even talking to them. They're just talking to Clyde and spamming me. I'm losing my... my ah! Anyways, to do that, you just want to do this angle bracket here. Then you want to do the at sign, and we want to paste in that funny little number, and then we want to do the closed bracket sign, and you should see that it pings Clyde, and the second you do that, he gets introduced into your DMs, and now you can talk to Clyde while your friends get to spectate and not give a single <laughs> No, wait, what was this fancy thing that I did? I did the little open bracket at sign and an ID, and then I close it, and it pings someone. Well, you can actually ping people, channels, and roles with their ID. What you can do is you can go into your user set, Settings, scroll down and you should see advanced then you should see developer mode and we want to enable that once you enable developer mode you can right click on someone's name scroll down and click copy user ID then what you need to do is you need to do this open bracket at sign paste in their ID then do a closed bracket which is this symbol here I'm gonna remove the space and you'll see Kaboom. It turns into a ping, and we can ping them to annoy them. But it doesn't stop there. Let's say this Bakugan, why did I name it this? You can right-click on a text channel, click copy channel ID, we do the open bracket, then we do hashtag. It's a little bit different, then we paste in the ID, then we do our little closing bracket, but make sure there's no space, so it gets turned into woo, just like that. Now you can have a little button that people can click on to go to your favorite channel. And finally, the nerdiest part of them all is you can click on someone's profile, right click on their role, copy the role ID, then you do the open bracket, then you need to do the at sign, then the and sign, paste it in, do your closing bracket, and it turns into the role ping, and now you can ping fart. My comedy knows no bounds. And finally, I have a treat for everyone. It is called Custom Rich Presences. Now, if you're a long time viewer, you already know I covered something like this, but this is using a different method, but it allows you to have a custom game that you're playing. It says, hey, I'm Frog. It shows a nice little emoji and a couple other things and a button that you can click on. And this button could go anywhere. I already know what internet website you're thinking of. Use it responsibly or you might get in trouble. Anyways, the method we're going to use to set this up is using Vencord. Now, Vencord is against Discord's terms of service, but to be absolutely honest, you doing this probably won't get you banned. There's a very low ban risk. So anyways, this will be a link in the description, vencord.dev. We want to click on download Vencord, go to Windows, then download the Vencord installer. Of course, you're on Linux, then you're probably not watching this video because you think you're smarter than me. You probably are. If you're on Mac, you don't even know how to open up YouTube. So I'm going to download this installer. It's going to say, oh, it's dangerous. Uh, no, keep it. Then click on the installer. Now, Windows is going to pop up and say, oh, I protected your computer. No, Windows is lying to you. This is safe. Just click on more info and run anyways. And it'll open up this Vencord installer. Now, you need to select an installation to patch. Basically, there are different versions of Discord, they're stable, PTB, and Canary. If you have no idea what the heck that is, just click on stable and click on install. And it should say successfully patched, and when it does that, you need to open back up your Discord because it will close. And now when you open it up, nothing has changed. And that's because you need to go to your user settings, and if you scroll down, you should see this Vencord tab on the left here. You want to go to plugins, and we want to search rich. Get your money up, not your funny up. That was awful joke, why am I saying this? Anyways, you should see custom RPC, you want to enable this, then we need to click on on this little gear cog here. Well, there's a lot going on, so we're gonna be going through a little bit of an explainer, holy moly. But first, we need to get the ID of the application for the rich presence. So you wanna click on this create an application button here and it'll open up the Discord developer portal. What you wanna do is you wanna click on new application. I'm going to put I am an e-girl, I'm going to click on the little doohickety do. If you don't see a team thing here, don't worry about it and click on create. Now I have my game, I am an e-girl, and if I scroll down, you will see this application ID. We want to copy that and and go back into our Discord and paste it in for the ID of the application. Now, in terms of the name of the presence and line one and line two, it basically shows up like this. So what you wanna do is you want to fill out the text however you want. For me, I'm trying to pretend I'm an e-girl. I'm gonna put I'm 100% an e-girl, not a dude, I promise. Now scrolling down, we can choose the type of presence so it can be playing, listening, watching, competing. Then there's this Unix timestamp thing. It's a little nerdy, so we're gonna skip it. Then we have sets the big image to the specified image. What does that mean? Well, in your rich presence, 
presence, you can have two images. You can have a big one in the center and a little one in the bottom right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Tenor and look at this beautiful GIF. Yes, you can have GIFs as your photos. I'm going to right click. I'm going to copy this image address. Then I'm going to go back to Discord and I'm going to paste it in. Then when you hover over this image, you can make it say a couple of weird text. I can put this is me and this is how it'll look. Then we can do the same thing with a small image. And then we have our buttons. So you can have two buttons on your rich presence. And for the first option, we need to pick the text of the first button. And this can only be English characters only. So just type in using your good little keyboard, say this is button and then you need to enter a URL. And for the second button, I can put in my Discord server and I can just enter in the invite link. Now, if I click on save and close and I exit Discord, uh, nothing's showing up. And that's because we need to do a couple of things. First off, you need to go to your user settings. You need to scroll down to activity privacy. You need to make sure that display current activity as a status message is enabled. Then next up, you need to make sure that you are online. It will not work if you appear offline, so do not disturb. Nothing's happening. Press the control and R key to restart Discord. And now when I restart Discord, you will see playing. I'm 100% an e-girl. And as you can see, beautiful. We have the e-girl. I'm 100% an e-girl. Not a dude, I promise. This is a button and my Discord server. Now this is very, very, very important. But if you click on this is button, oh, it does work now. Oh, good job, Discord. I was actually concerned. Anyways, you can tell that people are getting upset that I'm trying to be an e-girl. So I might just have to undo this. You want to go to your downloads, open up the installer again. It'll open up the installer. Then once once you open up the installer, you want to click on the install path that has patched in the name. So mine's PTB. Click on uninstall. Then it'll say successfully unpatched. If it doesn't work, just keep trying. Then it will work. Anyways, that's all. Bye-bye. Love you. Mwah!